Hello and welcome back. This is Sherry with Heart and Soulful back in the studio working on the French Journal series. I know it's been quite a, a while since I have recorded one of these videos, but I have been distracted doing other creative things, but I just have not been doing videos. So uh, I have done some posts. I had been working on some costumes that are finished. So I will be posting photos of those once they have the professional photos from the wedding available, then I will post some good photos. Uh, they did come last weekend and pick them up and try them on, but because they weren't all made up and everything, I didn't want to just do some kind of, you know, not great photos. So I'll, you'll have to wait for the big reveal, but I will post those. Uh, in the meantime, I want to finish up on this project that I have been working on. Uh, this will be episode 10. I will post um, down below in the description, just like always. I'm going to have a link to the playlist so you can watch from the beginning if you're just joining me for the first time. I'll also have a running list of all the any tools or products that I have referred to in any of the videos. They'll all be just in a running list. So as you watch these, you don't have to go back and, and try to find. Actually, the most recent video will have all of the things in it that I've done to date. So... I'm going to try to figure out where I left off in all of this. Uh, I, I'm working on a project. I'm calling it my French Journal series. This was heavily inspired by Rachel at Roxy Creations. I just love her channel, so I will put a link down below for that also. And I kind of started this project. I'm going to kind of cover maybe for those of you who have been watching from the beginning. This will be repetitive, but for those of you who have it, and because I'm just picking it up again, I kind of want to kind of recap for myself too. So... I started a French journal series using some old books or old book parts. I was inspired, like I said, by Rachel at Roxy Creations. She has a couple of two or three, I think, digital kits called French Chateau. And I have purchased those and have used them in the past and also created some of my own digital kits that I feel kind of coordinate with hers. That way I can use her products and then add my own into it to kind of give it my own unique style too, uh, so that I'm not just, you know, duplicating and copying her work. So I have, um, this one is heavily uh, actually with my digitals and then some French book page and just some other things. So I started doing this journal uh, because I had a request to purchase a journal that I had already sold and it had a, an old book that was this cover and so as part of my digital kit I scan I luckily had already scanned that cover before I sold the book and so I was able to print it out onto fabric and as I did these I ended up creating four journals so I'm kind of working on them simultaneously like I said this one was from an old book so it still had the spine intact and I did make a boo-boo that I had pointed out in previous videos where I was laying it flat to dry and using a World Atlas to sit on top of it that was kind of embossed and it left that embossing on my cover. It kind of faded there as it dried. And so I'm covering this because I needed to cover the spine anyway. I'm covering it with a piece of slow stitching. And I haven't, I, I've kind of gone into several videos now where I've done the slow stitching. I'll show it to you up close because I'm calling it finished and going to glue it on today. But this also was inspired by Rachel and her sister, Sarah, who have another channel, I believe. I will put a link down below. It's Roxy's Journal of Stitchery. And they do these ongoing projects where they each participate. So you get two point of views in, in learning from both of them. So they, they, all, they both have channels. But these projects are under the, instead of Roxy Creations, they're under the Roxy's Journal of Stitchery. And I participated in one of those. I think they've done probably two. Maybe they're on their third since then that I haven't been doing. But they go into depth and teach you how to slow stitch and do all the different stitches. So I, I don't show those um, on my videos because, again, I'm just new at all this and I'm just not good at stitching on camera. So you follow theirs if you want to learn how to do this. Um, like I've given some instruction in mine and I'll continue to do that, but I consider them much more expert at it. So anyway, that's what I had decided to do on for the spine of this one. Have another one going. This one was a book that I had just the two covers, but no spine. And so I've shown how I'm going to do my floating spines where I use uh, recycled 
a paper towel holder for my curved part of my spine. So this one is just kind of to the point where I need to do my slow stitching on that. And then this one I'm going to end up offering on my Etsy shop as just a naked journal. So it's actually finished. I used a recycled book and because it was small enough, I was able to use the entire uh, fabric printed uh, digital that I had to do the book cover. So it was just one piece and it included the spine. Whereas these, I needed to make them a little larger. So I actually printed them on fabric, but a larger front cover and then back cover, which left me not enough fabric to do the spine. So I'll do spine cover on this one. Um, same with this one. I can't remember now if it was big enough to fit the whole thing, but I didn't do that it that way anyway. I kind of think it wasn't. And I think this one, it feels pretty thin, like I may have made this one out of just recycled cereal box or something like that. And same thing, it, it will have a floating spine using my paper towel, recycled paper towel. And same thing, I'll need to do a spine cover for that. And this one also is gonna be sold as a naked journal. Um, so by naked journal, it's got you know some of my digitals and just different types of tea stain paper and and kind of that but it's left for you to decorate and add pockets or tucks or any of those things a couple of the pages i did fold up so it's almost a pocket um, so you can kind of play around with it and give it your own added style so those two i'll have two naked ones and then two the two larger i'll go ahead and add um, different. I've already kind of added some of my printed envelopes as pockets that I've done. I've shown this in videos how I do this um, using the digitals and then just printing them on recycled envelopes. So these two will be sold with a little bit more in them. So let's first go to the one that I have my slow stitching done and I'll kind of give you a, an up close look. I ended up doing a lot more than I had planned. If you're anything like me, I, I get very detail oriented and I had planned to keep this kind of simple, but the more I added, the more I wanted to add. I added some vintage buttons. Um, I showed that in the last video, but then they just seemed to be floating all by themselves. So I actually turned them into kind of the centers of flowers. So it kind of made this more of a focal point um, and then I added this little couple here on the, that are going to be on the spine. I did go ahead and add that little metal piece that I found uh, and just added it on there. And I actually, it was a piece, a jewelry finding. So there were actually two loops here. And I just kind of stitched around those uh, and then added lots of little beads and just kind of some different um textural flowers not trying to do anything that looked like a, a real intentional flower but you know some that were a little smaller and then adding lots of little french knots and little um, glass beads just you know to kind of fill in some of the empty space and I kind of I started getting it so filled up I was covering a, up a lot of my initial stitching but that's kind of the fun part it's just like doing a collage you keep adding layers and the more you add, the more interesting it gets. Even on some of the flowers that maybe I had only done one color, I went back and maybe added a, a contrasting color just to give it more and more detail. And the same with this rose. After I had kind of gotten so busy doing all of this, my rose kind of looked a little empty. I had only done some of the stitching here and there and I decided I really wanted that filled up. So I ended up doing different stitches in different colors uh, in every little space to cover up all of the fabric of the rose and added a bunch of beading in there also, um, and then added the, the greenery down here that I didn't have before. So it's a lot more than I thought I would do, but I just get carried away. I enjoy doing it and I, I just kept wanting to add to it. So I'm gonna go ahead and glue this down today. The other thing that I did do on it, I didn't do it on this edge, but you know me and my white edges that I don't like. And because I had cut around this rose and the leaves, it left me a little white edge around a fabric. And I just dirtied that up a little bit with my Distress Oxide Vintage Photo that I always use. It's just the one, this one, and then a Distress Ink, um, I think it's the uh, ground espresso, oh no, walnut stain. I keep these on my desk because they're always handy 
to use for any kind of aging some white edges. So I just took some of that. Now, I will mention that this is distressed oxide. It's not permanent. So when I add my glue, I need to be careful because it's gonna oxidize this edge. I'm not gonna mind that. It's just gonna make it look more tea stained. But just be aware that if you do add any of your distress inks or oxides, you know, you can reconstitute them with water. So anything you add to, to that, it's going to make those bleed. In the case of the vintage photo, it tends to bleed out a little yellow undertone because of the color that is in the vintage photo. So just be aware of that if you do something like that. So for the glue on this one, let me just kind of open it up here. I'm gonna do the spine, I think, first. One thing I should mention too, and I have done that in other videos, you can see how kind of dirty and water-stained this looks. I showed in the in one of the earlier videos when I did the cover, I printed it onto fabric, which I have done and shown in previous videos. When you do that, you're using your printer ink, and it's also not permanent ink. You know, it's, it, for, it's not a laser printer. What I have is an inkjet printer. And so all that ink will also bleed. When you go to glue it onto a book or do something with it, sometimes you do, you know, you get a fingerprint on it that was wet or get some glue on it that you can't get off. If you tried to wipe that off, it would also take the ink off. So it's going to look aged and distressed. So for me, I just went intentionally, took all my covers and distressed them even more by, you know, dripping a little bit of water with, you know, you can do droplets or something to get some water stains on it you know, kind of um, dirty it up a little bit, spritz the whole thing, and it'll kind of fade out the color of the ink. Uh, and that gave me just kind of a more old, worn, used book. So if you like that look, then you don't have to be so worried about not messing anything up, about being too perfect. Um, because if you're like me, you make mistakes and you get things where you don't want them. So I think I'm gonna put glue just on the spine first so that I can get that glued down. And I'm gonna use um, this neutral pH um, adhesive from, I'm not sure how you say this, but Laneco. Um, and I will put links below. Uh, they have a website, they're here in the United States. But it's um, great for book binding, any kind of book work, because it's uh, pH neutral. But you can use any kind of PVA glue, will work. Um, but I just happen to have this. If you've watched previous videos, I used uh, lampshade glued because I had a bunch of that and it worked really well for this too. But you can use Fabri-Tag, any, anything that's going to glue this down um, that you want, you know, to be permanent. Uh, so let's see, I'm just going to put this right on here. Now it had been a long time since I had used any of these glue bottles. And so I would recommend, and I try to remember myself to do this, is when I'm finished cleaning up, maybe once a week, if I know, especially if I know I'm not going to be working on this for a while like I did. I'm looking for my, I was looking for my silicone spreader. You need to clean out all of your little dispensers. I would clean all of these out if you know you're not going to be using for a while. This one's my art glitter one, and it has especially these fine applicators. This is a fine line applicator, too, to get into tight spots. And these, you can ruin these super easy with that if you don't keep them clean. This one has a little pin in the lid that goes in. And even if you think that's cleaned out and you leave it for a while, this pin will get glued inside the other one. And when you go to open this and pull it out, you'll just pull the pin out of your lid. So... If you're not gonna be using these for a bit, even if you are at the end of it every day, if you have the patience to do that, clean your nozzles out so that you don't ruin them because some of these glues are not inexpensive, these applicators, and I have ruined more than one. So make sure you do that. So I'm just using this little silicone spreader. You don't have to have this, you can use your finger, but I just find that it gets keeps my hands clean and I I can just really work it in there and get it spread everywhere. So a nice even layer. You don't want it too wet. You know, you want everything to stick down, but if you get it too wet, you it might come through your fabric. In this case, I have lots of layers. So I'm hoping this is enough here. So it's really not gonna go through, but I'm just gonna kind of 
center that on there. And then I can check and make sure when I wrap around, it's gonna look pretty even. In my case, I wanna cover up the boo-boo that I made here. And I really wanted this little French wording off of the, a book spine to show up there. So I'm just gonna kind of hold that for a second. You know, and it's not really gonna stick quite, oops, quite yet because it needs to dry. And then if I have anything come up, I can always use Fabri-Tac. So let's see here. So on this one, I think I want to, in a perfect world, I would, I would put it here. I can also put it to my book so that it's not soaking my fabric too much. Um, what I could do, let's see if this will work, maybe kind of use a pencil and just go, it's going to get covered up anyway. So I can kind of see where my edge is going to be. I don't know if this is going to show up, but we're going to see. I'm going a little inside because I don't want it to show up. I can kind of see that a little bit. I know you can't on camera, but I kind of can. So I'm going to try this and see how we do. Now, I'm not going to worry about every little edge of this right now because I can take my same glue with my little applicator and I can get all along these edges. Same with my art glitter glue. This one's not coming out as well as I want and I don't want to put too much pressure on it. So maybe it needs a second cleaning here, but I can try my art glitter. Oops. And this way I can make sure I get my edges really good. So I'm not gonna worry about this too much now. I'll do this off camera. I'll go back once this is dried and see if I have any little edges that are popping up, but it's feeling pretty good for right now. And I'll just go along like so. And add glue. But I want to give this a chance to dry. So I can put some weight on that um, afterwards. Okay, and I'm going to get this side. And I can feel it's already really kind of sticking there. So that's good. Okay, so I just want this to dry. And we'll see how that looks after it's dry. But now I have my I spine with some buttons and vintage book and little beads. And then the front, I have some buttons. So, you know, going into a shelf or something, you have to be careful. But this is more for display, too. So I really like how that looks. Now I need to decide about my closure also. And I had picked out this button that I really like. It has some gold on it. It's a little plastic one, I think feels plastic, but it has some little floral detail and gold on it. And I had originally picked that one out. I had put it aside and then forgot I had picked it out because I had been away for a bit. And then I had found in the meantime, these two glass buttons and they're nice vintage glass. They have some texture to them. And I had thought about putting one on the front with a ribbon and one on the back with a ribbon that you would tie in a bow. So maybe tell me what you think in the comments. 
if you vote on this button. And then I would probably just have an eyelet here with the ribbon and then it ties around this button. Or it's a little small, but I did like that it had gold or the larger glass buttons. Um, and then with some ribbon. So tell me what you think in the comments and I'm gonna set this one aside to dry before I play around with it too much. I want that all in these edges here. So I'm gonna put that away and let's see what I need to do on these. Again, this one's finished without maybe closure. Maybe I'll put a little, just tie a little ribbon with some eyelets on this one. We'll see. And these two need spine covers. Now I hope I don't take as long as I did on the other one, but I think printed out some fabric. And I think I've shown this before. If you have never printed on fabric, I've covered this before. This again is one of my digitals. And I take a sticky, a solid sticky sheet sticker paper, and I take it apart, take the backing off. So now I just have the sticker paper. And I just put it on to a piece of white cotton. You can use new fabric that's just, you know, basic like muslin weight, um, white cotton fabric. In this case, I used a tan color, so it already looks kind of that aged tea stained look. You could use tea stained fabric so that it already has some stains on it, rusted fabric, any of that kind of thing. Just something thin. You can use an old recycled sheet that maybe you've kind of distressed. You can use that and just make sure you get all the wrinkles out and trim around the edge so you don't have any like little loose threads that might like this that might get caught in your printer. Just get rid of those before you run it through. And then I use an Epson Echo Tank printer and I just use the back feeder to feed it and use just a plain paper setting and then just run it through and I've never had a problem. It's never gotten jammed. The only thing that ever does happen and is every once in a while you'll get like a little extra ink somewhere and sometimes that's on the front of your fabric. So in this case, it kind of happened here a little bit. If you can see that, I have a little black smudge. So if I'm gonna use this part, which I think I am for this one, I can just do some embroidery that's gonna cover that up. So I've already measured what I need for this larger one. We'll do that first maybe. And for my book, I'm gonna measure the exact length of my book in this case, it is going to be seven and seven and five eighths, and then however wide that I want it to be. So I'm going to look at my fabric, which is kind of curling on me. But if I look at the design, if you'll notice when I printed this, sometimes it doesn't feed quite straight through. This one should have covered the whole fabric, but I had my size settings incorrect and I don't want to waste this so when it printed it didn't print the whole thing or it printed a stripe across the top I don't know what happened but it's not exactly straight so I'm afraid if I rip this it's not going to be ripped straight to the design uh, and there's just a little tiny bit down here so I think what I'm going to do is use scissors instead of tearing it I like a torn edge but in this case that might not be the smartest thing so let me measure this, and I am, if I leave this little border on the bottom, I'm exactly correct on the size. So I think what I'm gonna do is just use scissors and cut this top edge off and leave this little bottom edge. Uh, and I think maybe I covered up with lace or something anyway. So I could actually leave a little bit on this, I guess, if I wanted to do that. And I'm just gonna cut this and I really like these scissors that I have they're kind of new they're from tonic studios Tim Holtz scissors and I really like them if you're you can see they're right or left-handed I'm not left-handed but it's kind of nice that they're either way but they just cut really nice even fabric and my fabric scissors for some reason aren't cutting fabric as well so and I've only used them for fabric so I don't know what the deal is but Cut that off now. And then I do have a little bit of edge on either side here, but let me see. I'm thinking about using the little French lady here for the spine. She has a big dress, but she kind of fits nicely just on the spine there. 
Um, and then I just kind of have her hand here, which I don't mind that so much because I think I can just do a simple viney thing of flowers or something on this edge. Um, and then if I do that, that actually kind of gave me a nice amount for the front to wrap around. So let's see how much that is. That's about an inch and a half. So if I see where this is and see where an inch and a half, oh, that puts me right here. Perfect. So that way, if I do want to use this for the other one, maybe the rows on the other one, that would look fine. So I'm going to just cut this right in between her and her dress and the leaf. And I think I'm going to draw a line and do this because I don't know how squared up this whole thing is. Actually, that's not too bad. Just so I've, I kind of have a square shape. So where is that pencil? I'm just going to draw a little line here that I may or may not be able to see. And cut there. Okay, and that leaves me this piece. So I think I think I like that. And then I can always um, maybe add some trim or lace or something around the to cover this little edge if I want or just leave it. I don't actually even mind, it's pretty straight. Just kind of get rid of some of these threads. Okay, so I have that and that's good. Now on the previous one that I did the slow stitching, I kind of added some other fabrics, patches here and there. And I may do that on this one and just kind of show you a photo update every, you know, few days or something or maybe maybe I don't do so much on this one and I just get it finished again I'm not really great about doing it on camera just because I get my head in the way and all of that my my vision is not the greatest and I already wear a multifocal lenses but it's still tough in fact I got the best I'm in tool heaven I've been cleaning off my jewelry bench that I have not sat down and worked on jewelry in about two years I want to say I, I kind of went on a tangent and I've been cleaning that desk off, ordering some new tools, just checking my material supply. I ordered a new chair and I got the best lamp in the world. I've only had it for a couple of days, but I love it. And I think you can get, you can get it in a tabletop. Mine actually clamps to my table. It, I love the size of it. It's actually a pretty good size. So I can put it up high and get it out of my way for overhead lighting, or I can pull it right down where I need it. And I love this lamp, so I'm going to put a link down below. But it's a magnifier, and it's a light, and it's a good size of magnifier, and it has this little lid so you don't you can close it so you don't get dust on on the lens and keep it nice and clean. It's a glass lens. Uh, I just I just love it. So um, I I will put a link to this, but it's not cheap. But you know what? The right tools make your life so much better, and it's great for doing slow stitching. So I actually have a pull out thing on my jewelry bench. And I finished up that slow stitch piece using my magnifier and I, it, it just is great. So can't say enough good things so far about this lamp. Okay, so I'm gonna end up, I think maybe doing the same thing with adding layers and whatnot. It, this is thin fabric. Again, if I were to just slow stitch on this and glue it down, it's a little thin where I might have glue come through. So I kind of like to attach this um, maybe to another piece of fabric, a fabric backing that's, again, just maybe another thin piece of cotton. That way it kind of gives me that thick texture. I had done on this, I can't really show you now, but there are, you know, where I've added patches and things, there are more layers of fabric than just this thin layer. You can kind of see where I attached my printed piece to another piece. That's what the little fringy is. Uh, and it just kind of gives you that more, not quilted really, but kind of just a more substantial, you know, feel than just that thin piece where glue might soak through. So I, I think I'll do that the same to this and just maybe even do a very visible canthus stitch, you know, so that you can see it's kind of a, another thing. Maybe I can't the stitch on all the background part, but not the lady and that might bring her forward more. And then I can, you know, do some little details around the bottom of her dress and her bows and, you know, little um, jewels, maybe do some beads on her, her on her necklace, you know, her bracelets, that kind of thing. 
Um, so we'll see. I'll play around with that, and I'll just show you from time to time as I work on this one. And then let's see for the other one. It's a little bit smaller. I have my spine. And just staying in the theme, since I've already printed this piece of fabric, I might as well. Oh, I guess I didn't show. Well, maybe I did, that I had already put the um, inside liner paper on there. So this one, let's see. Oh, it says, what does it say? France right there. So that's kind of nice, that word wording to be there. I could, if you see there's a line here where the fabric changes from this one to this one, that might be a nice spot, kind of. Then I kind of don't have my whole... for my spine, that's kind of nice. And that doesn't, I can even trim some of this off if I don't want it to go all the way. I won't cut this flower out of that part, I don't think. Let me move it up just a little bit, maybe. Kind of there. Maybe trim this off, it doesn't need to be that big. Something like that. And then do the same amount. Let's measure, where's my ruler? So if I go to the edge of that, this design here maybe, that would be, this is not the best ruler, it's clear, so I can't see my little lines, but I think that's an inch and a, an inch and a half there. So, oh yeah, an inch and a half is here. So I think an inch and a half, from the lot from the line trim that off and then an inch and a half puts me just past that leaf kind of there okay so i think i'll draw a line here And an inch and a half. Let's see if I'm straight. Use my grid. Use your grid. Go there. Here. Close enough. Okay, so if I trim that off and that, I will have a nice spine for this book. Now, even with these little pieces, you know, these little strips, I can add, you know, if I want to add some interest, stitch some pieces on here or there. That could be interesting too, you know, some little patches here and there. I don't know where. I kind of like these stamps. So maybe I cut those off. This little stripe could be somewhere. I don't know where or this way maybe. But I kind of like this little bit. And I can fray these if I want. You know, they end up mostly getting covered up, honestly, the way I seem to be doing things. But, you know, just to add some more interest somewhere, even over some of these leaves. That was not my favorite thing, to, to satin stitch all those leaves. But I kind of like it on the blue because it's a contrast. Maybe not so much this. Cut this off. I don't know. We'll play around and see. I know that I end up covering up a lot of it with stitching. So what do I have on this one? I may go dig through my laces and whatever scraps I might have laying here on my table from before that I still haven't cleaned up. 
but maybe I can add something of this, you know, since I have kind of this black and or charcoal and tan, same, add some here maybe. This is kind of dark right here. I don't know, we'll see. I'll play around with this off camera and kind of see what I want to do. Um, but I will show you as I go along again, update, um, just so you can see the stages, you know, if you've watched any of these stitching channels that I watch, um, Roxy, uh, Journal of Stitchery, Ann Brooks Textiles, um, who else? There's, there's a few. I'll try to remember and put links below so that if you haven't slow stitched before and want to kind of see how to do the stitches and the layering and that, I have shown some in my videos, but uh, I'll, I'll link those below for you too. So I'm going to get working on these. The next thing that I need to do on the two that I'm going to be adding more things is going through my bin of cards and embellishments and just see where I might want to add more pockets and little tuck things and um, add cards and that sort of thing, some decorative things to this um, before I sell it. So uh, we'll continue working on this after this glue has dried. So have a great rest of your day. Now go make something. Bye. It's so good to be back.